All right, season two premiere of Log Horizon. I mean, I've been busy catching up to this show because I heard about it and I'm wondering, oh, you know, what do they do different than all the other shows that have uh, integrated, you know, people coming into the game and it becoming a reality. In this case, I love this show. I mean, my God, I've never been more invested in any show in my life. From beginning to end, even when they're talking about building up the economy and the politics, I would think like, oh, that's so boring. Why are they doing this? I want some action. But no, I am riveted. I'm just sitting there in complete awe. Just like, whoa. Even when the attacks are not really like physical attacks, they're, you know, attacks, you know, through politics and contracts. It's like, I'm still just as suspenseful. Like, oh my God, what's going to happen? This show has exceeded expectations that I didn't even know I should have about the show. Good God. And season two premiere, immediately I'm already in love. I mean, all right. They show us scenes about the future. You know, some battles are going to happen, some new characters. Although I will say I I'm still don't really like the spoilers. It just seems like I know what they're trying to do. There's like get hyped up. There's going to be battles later on, but you don't need to do that. Log Horizon, even when there's no action, is still just as filled with action and not in the physical way it's hard to explain but it's just fantastic you don't need to give us spoilers well i'm willing to wait i'm willing to wait for any action because uh, you know even the dialogue is just well written it's just oh, i'm in love with this show but either way we finally meet the uh kunai clan or kuni clan Kuni clan it's hard to pronounce their name because maybe it might be pronounced differently than it's spelled but it's just kunai clan kunai clan let's just say that they're the ones in charge of all the banks they're the ones in charge of the money and the royal guard is like wow okay i'm wondering why they were introduced before but maybe it wasn't that important and the reason uh, that shiroe is trying to negotiate something with them is because to keep the city functioning as freely as it does they need a lot of money so and the tax is probably not enough i mean you can have adventures go out and kill monsters every day and collect money but even if they just pay one or ten coins a day it's still not going to be enough because they need about 80 trillion gold to secure the financial security of uh, this Akihabara it's like damn that is a lot of money and it makes me wonder about our society I mean you take a lot of things for granted I take a lot of things for granted and to see this show and have it you know help me realize how important some of these things are like why are some things so expensive when it takes uh, it costs less to make them like this is why you know like okay my god this is this show isn't just entertaining me it's actually educating me in a way and so few shows do that and they do it so well I me mean, ah my god and of course you know shiroe you know has to leave you know to make negotiations closer to the kunai clan's village and so now you know and the negotiations lead to a revelation that this will probably lead to a future raid quest that requires fighting possibly a very powerful creature maybe even a godlike being in order to obtain endless gold because that's pretty much what the kunai clan gets all the gold to put into the monsters is this room and they need an army in order to accomplish this but shiroe mentions we can't depend on akihabara in this case because the south is watching them waiting for a chance to sneak in and take over the whole city too so now we have to find forces somewhere else and i'm what and i'm kind of guessing it's silver sword and i'm forgetting his name the purple haired bastard you know the monk who threatened serata before so now they're looking for forces there and i'm wondering about ddd and uh the black knights they're out there fighting the goblin king's armies it's like okay so that thing is going on too that there's just so much going on it makes me realize yeah, I mean, everyone is having their own adventures in a way, even though they're trying to work together the best they can to, for the common goal of securing Akihabara's freedom and 
you know, their their rights to have adventure and have fun because even though this city needs to function in order and everything, they still need to make it feel like a game. They have to realize, like, don't worry, you can still have fun, you know. But, you know, but we still have to create some sort of law and some sort of order and foundation to build upon. Again, I love this show for that reason. It's not just action, 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 constant adventure and marching to war. And even though they do have that, and it's done well. I mean, every time they I see armies marching towards a battle, it's like, it is awesome. Good God. But... They don't always need to depend on that. And that's something I love. I mean, I don't want to bring in another show on this case. But I have to because there's just too many comparisons to make because of the fact that they're stuck in a game and the game's become reality. Stored Online had the chance to do something like this, but they didn't take it. And sometimes I wonder why. Were they too afraid people would get bored with trying to create a new society in this new land or something like that? And they just wanted action, action. And then they realized, oh, people get bored of the action. So let's end the action here and move on to another game. Like, no, moving on to another game is not the answer. Making the game itself interesting with lore and building a society and having it function similarly but at the same time differently than our own is what creates a good atmosphere and allows characters to expand not just themselves but you know friendships and relationships and that's what log horizon has done it it really has made me fall in love with it it just log horizon is a great show and i'm hoping it does get a lot of the support it deserves more and more people should watch this show but either way back to the actual episode it's fantastic. I loved it. And near the ending, again, spoilers, but it's going to play a bigger part in this uh, season. The real world may may come back. Like Maybe they're going to die and come back to it. Maybe it's the curse is going to be lifted. Something's going to happen. World-altering magic. I have no idea, but it's a mystery that at, one point, at a certain level I am excited to find out about. But at the same time, I'm a little worried because... I like where things are going. There's still so much to do in this world. Uniting the nation. Uniting the world. And while it's true. The ultimate goal should be to escape. And go back to the real world. I'd still want to stay around. And fix things first. Because you never know. At this point. What is real and what isn't. That's kind of one of the great uh, parts about this show. At a certain point. You start wondering. Once you go back to the real world, well, will we, the audience, even consider it the real real world? No, at this point, it'll be the, the fake one. We'll always consider Elder Tale, the world they've been living in and fighting monsters in for the last, let's say, months, is the real world at this point to us. So, who knows? Uh, but either way, I can't wait for the next episode, and I feel like this season's going to be the best one yet. Well... It's only two uh, seasons, but still. I mean, it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. So until then, I'm Tony Dragon. Bye-bye.